Hello and welcome to the April episode of Across the Gulf Coast. We've got another great show in store for you. A lot happening up and down the Emerald Coast during these spring months. Uh, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of things to talk about. People getting back out in the community, enjoying great events and this great springtime weather we have here. So we're going to start off in Pensacola with one of the most popular festivals that we have in Pensacola each year that takes place downtown. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But first, I would like to introduce Jeff Brown and Bridget Middleton. They're with Fiesta Pensacola. Thank you so much for coming on the program today. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So, Bridget, let's start with you since you're the uh, executive director for Fiesta Pensacola. Tell us a little bit about Fiesta uh, and what your mission is, what you guys do here in the community. Yeah, Fiesta has uh, been around in Pensacola for uh, we're in our 72nd, 73rd year. Uh, take COVID out of there. <laughs> so, but since 1949, when Fiesta was formed, and and essentially what the mission became, it started out as trying to get tourists to our area. But um, we established a mission a few years ago, and um, the mission uh, verbatim is to celebrate our heritage, promote tourism, and build pride in Pensacola through festive activities, which enhance the quality of life in our community. Sorry, guys, my phone's ringing. <laughs> Hey, that's quite all right. That's the world we live in right now. The <laughs> yeah. virtual uh, post-COVID world uh, uh, of dogs barking and, and yeah. phones ringing and everything else. It, it's all good. Uh, so yeah, you guys do a lot of great things. Yeah. yeah, the way we do that is by throwing our festivals. We have two, three major festivals per year. Um, one being the one we're here to talk about today. I'll let you um, talk about that in a little while. But the other one is the Seafood Festival in the fall and then the 10-day Fiesta Heritage Festival every summer, so um, which includes lots of different events. Yeah, a lot of events, and we'll have you guys on uh, in a couple months to talk about those, and also talk about seafood uh, coming up in the late summer, early fall time frame. But like you said, you know, big one coming up uh, here in the next couple of weeks at the end of this month. Um, it's kind of the you know the kickoff to to all of your events throughout the summer. Uh, but it's of course the Pensacola Crawfish Festival downtown Pensacola. So Jeff, you are the, uh, the chairman uh, for, for the festival. Um, tell us a little bit about, you know, just give us an overview of the festival and then we'll dive into some of the details, but give us an overview of the festival and sure. what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's a great event. It's the 37th annual uh, Crawfish Festival. It'll be happening in Seville Square and Fountain Park, uh, kind of where a seafood festival happens at as well. And seeing the turnout from seafood and now that we're kind of over this COVID hurdle, you can see people are ready to come back out. And it, it's one of the biggest, you know, crawfish boil type festivals in, in this region. So it's definitely a good time. You know, the weather's going to be great, hopefully, and everybody will come out and just have some good crawfish. Yeah, uh, hopefully we have perfect weather, which you yep. know, a lot of times we get lucky and do, but uh, what are the <laughs> dates? Good. We're going to have perfect weather. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> what are the dates of this year's event? Sure. Yeah, it's right, like you said earlier, at the end of the month. So April 29th through May 1st, that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, the hours kind of work out for everybody. So Friday, it's 11 to 11. Saturday, it's 10 to 11. And then on Sunday, it's back 11 to 5. We close a little bit early on Sunday. Um, we got, you know, arts and crafts vendors down there. We've got various food vendors. So if crawfish isn't your thing, or if you have the little ones and maybe they're, they're not ready to dive into that crawfish world, don't worry. We got them covered, you know, from various vendors doing you know, shrimp po' boys to grilled cheese, you name it, we got it. Yeah, I think that is an important point right there because, you know, not everybody likes crawfish. Right. Uh, so it, it's a crawfish festival. People might, you know, be mistaken to think that's all you have. So but thank you for mentioning that. That is a mm -hmm. great point. Uh, something for everybody. And uh, just food wise, you guys have a lot of acts and uh, you mentioned the arts and crafts, but you also have some musical acts and you have a kids area, a kids zone too. Yeah, we do. We do. We want to kind of incorporate the community. We don't want it to just be you know, one event come down, a couple bands, you know, a tenty crawfish fishing, and that's it. So that's why we want the community to come down. There's kids areas. Again, there's arts and crafts vendors. You can hang out, listen to great music. We have everything from, you know, the classic Zydeco type that you're going to hear at a lot of crawfish festivals to rockabilly and you name it in between. So it, it is a good time. We have live music playing throughout the festival. And again, plenty of space to walk around, shop, have fun with the little ones where they can, you know, do their arts and crafts, come back, eat great food. And if you got room for desserts, we even got you covered there. Yeah. So, and also I'd like to interject that the kids area is free once again this year. Yep. Thank you to our awesome sponsors, Cox. So <laughs> appreciate that, um, that partnership with Cox and um, which will make all the activities 
uh, in the kids area, except for face painting. Face painting is a, you know, got to pay for that. But um, but all the arts and crafts, all the games, all the stuff to play um, in the kids area, completely free. So. Yeah, we're, we're happy to do that. It's a great partnership we've had for yep. many years. So that section is free. What about the festival overall? Uh, is there a cost for admission in the festival? Uh, yeah. yeah, there is. There is. Um, there's a $5 cost for the adults to uh, to get in. And kids um, uh, ages 6 to 12, it's just a $2 cost to get in. Again, we have various gates that will be gated off. And that's just, you know, again, to get in, have a good time. Um, it, it is just that small cost. And, and remember, before 3 p.m. on Friday, it's completely free. Yep. You don't charge to get in. So you can come have a late lunch or early lunch or late lunch. Um, start your happy hour at the festival <laughs> on Friday. And also on Friday, active duty military um, is also completely free all day on Friday. So. All right. That's great. And we are out of time already. I know that time flies by. But <laughs> I do want to drive everybody to uh, FiestaPensacola.org to the website they have the lineup i'm sure they have all the information that you need uh, yep. about the festival so again fiestapensacola.org uh for more information on the festival jeff bridget thank you all so much for joining me today i really appreciate it yep thanks, thanks for having us take care stay with us when we come back we'll be joined by impact 100 from okaloosa county